Good evening and a very warm welcome to Television Tonga News. Making headlines, Dr. Stephen Halapua urges local media to ensure that all disseminated and published news stories is accurate. Director of Health convey his heartfelt apologies after inconvenient in his services without his knowledge and respecting branches in Hapai and Iwa has been shut down starting today. These are more stories later on in this bulletin. I'm Fatai Fenga with the details. It is vital to ensure that all disseminated information is balanced, accurate and impartial. These are some of the issues raised during a one-day workshop hosted by Parliament for local media today. Sinilatu reports. Every workplace obtains their own working policies and rights, but it is important that they respect other beliefs and policies. The statement was made by the People's Representative of Tongatapu 3 to media personnel that have attended a one-day workshop in Parliament. He also emphasised that media obtains their own code of ethics, but they must ensure that all disseminated information in all sorts of media outlets are balanced. All media outlets are responsible for balancing of news stories published and disseminated by media. However, if they fail to do so, then they are therefore responsible for manipulating public with the inaccurate information. However, the Deputy Clerk of the House, Dr. Sione Vikilani, highlights the responsibilities of media. Media should ensure that they feed public with the right information because all news disseminated and published determined some of the public's decision-making. However, if the news delivered is wrong, then it will affect their decisions, but if it is right, this will determine a better future for the public in general. Dr. Vikilani also highlights the importance that media work together with related stakeholders to ensure that all delivered information is true. The Director of Health, Dr. Sele Akaola, has conveyed his heartfelt apologies to the public after Viola's dental ward was closed down yesterday and today without noticing public. Dr. Akaola revealed his apologies to radio and television Tonga News this morning, saying that he's not aware of what happened. One of our news reporters visited the dental ward yesterday and evident that there was a notice put outside the ward's main entrance saying that all dental clinic in Mayola by Nia Nukunuku will be closed down temporarily for two days to enable staff to attend the ministry's workshop. In the meantime, many patients were waiting outside but only a few were treated and the rest were told to return home until next Monday. The health director apologizes for this inconvenience, saying that he's aware of the problem that this has caused the public. He says two dental officers have been directed to inform public on this matter, but they seem to fail their duty given. He again apologizes for the inconvenience, saying that they will make sure that this will never happen in future. The West Bank, Bank of Tonga branches in Hapai and Ewa has been shut down starting today. Westbeck Bank of Tonga reveals this to Radio Tonga and Television Tonga News this morning. Sinlato reports. The Westbeck Bank of Tonga believes that this will not cause any inconvenience to its customers, mainly in the islands of Hapai and Vava'u, where the branches will shut down. However, they take on another step as to working together with the Tonga Development Bank and the Tonga Development Bank will be their agent in these islands who will carry out their usual tasks. Meanwhile, in a radio program of the Ministry of Education and Training, the Ministry has informed and warned their teachers in regards to the matter. Westpac Bank of Tonga has also confirmed that some of its staff has moved to Tongatapu and while others who have lost their jobs have been given several packages. Television Tonga News tried to get information as to why these branches have been shut down, but after contacting the office, they've said that they will not release any other information as to why the bank was shut down until the general manager, Dennis Quill, will return from overseas. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sinla Tu from the office of the Westpac Bank of Tonga in Nukalofa. The editor and publisher of Kilea newspaper have been pronounced guilty this morning for contempt of court and will be sentenced on September 12, 2013. Chief Justice Michael Scott delivered the judgment at the Supreme Court. 
The application was filed by the Attorney General Neil Adset against Marteni and Latala Tapueluelu of an opinion made by the editor Marteni in regards to a ruling of a civil case. That case was between editor and publisher of the Kalea newspaper, the Kalea newspaper and Solomon Nepalu against seven government ministers. The opinion piece was published on the Kalea newspaper, page 7, dated June 24th. The civil case was a defamatory case where Magistrate Balatatafu ruled that the four accused pay more than 124,000 paanga. In the opinion piece, Martin Tapaluelu expressed his opinion about the ruling made by Mr. Tatafu. The Attorney General felt that the opinion piece is an alleged contempt of court. Mr. Edset represented himself, but the Solicitor General appears on his behalf, while Siona Etika acts as legal counsel for Mateni and Lautala Tapuelwelo, but none of them appears when a judgment was delivered. Tonga will earn more than a million paanga on this year's squash pumpkin exportation to foreign markets. This is according to the Honourable Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, Food and Fisheries in an interview with Radio and Television Tonga. Anasiu Falikano with the details. In a special visit to the squash cultivated area yesterday, the Honourable Minister witnessed many developments in this sector. Speaking to Radio and Television Tonga News, Honourable Singh Star Salala says, this is squash pumpkin products will earn more than a million paanga. Tonga is still less fortunate due to the unused land in the kingdom. This shows how many are not willing to either cultivate or use the land for farming. However, I have high hopes of this year's squash products that it will bring millions to Tonga's economy. As part of the government effort to ensure that this sector continues, they have assisted the squash exporters and growers financially. This is one of the reasons why the government and the parliament put aside 1 million paanga for the squash growers and offered 400,000 paanga each to the growers to help prepare their squash products. The minister adds that squash product is one of the main economic activities that have generated a lot of income to the growers and the government's economy. There are only three squash growers in Tonga and their main market is in Japan. Nasir Falegano for Television Tonga News. Staff of Tonga Power Limited was fortunate to be part of a short-term training funded by the North Power Company of New Zealand. Ten of its staff has departed Tonga this afternoon for a two-week training in New Zealand. This focuses on enhancing skills of local electrician to ensure sustainable electricity supplies to the locals. Again, Anastasia Farakano with more on that story. The receipts of the two-week program will gain knowledge on developing electricity supplies in Tonga. This is according to the CEO of the Tonga Power Limited, John Menbrink, in an interview with Radio and Television Tonga News. Yes, there are 10 of our line staff, our train linemen, um, have been selected to uh, go to New Zealand to see if they can, um, are suitable for employment with North Power, a contractor on the distribution businesses in New Zealand. Um, so these 10 people are going down to New Zealand for a period of two weeks, leaving today, uh, to assess their capabilities, what their skills are like, whether they will fit into the company there. They'll also get told uh, what, will, uh, what the work condition is going to be like if they work there, uh, what they can expect, and uh, obviously also what their families should look out for. The CEO says if receipts achieve the targeted goals of the program, they will then be given opportunities to migrate with their families overseas. In the meantime, they can also be offered a working opportunity from the North Power Company. Correct, particularly with the families, they will migrate through. Yeah. And one of the reasons is that um, it's an opportunity to develop these line staff. They'll be able to do things uh, and work that we can't do in, in Tonga as yet. Um, over the next few years, we'll be installing some very uh, sophisticated switches on our network, and we're hoping that these line staff will, over the years, come back and help maintain the network uh, here in Tonga. This is Tonga Power's first exchange program with the New Zealand's company, funded through the New Zealand Company Aid Program. Tonga Girls Guide will conduct their fundraising tomorrow, aiming to assist members of the Tonga community that was under the guidance of uh, Reverend Kelepi and Luciola Misa. This is according to the Chief Commissioner of Tonga Girl Scout Association, Halai Balopalo. She says that 72 members of the uh, centre has been capped under the Tonga Girl Guide. In the meantime, he says that, uh, she says rather, it is important to help those that are in need. 
The fundraising conducted by the Girls Guide is part of their main mission to lend a helping hand to those who really need it. This will be held at the ground located at the uh, intersection between Wellington and Dafa'aha Road. That's the local news. Pacific is up next.